Hello, bonjour. Thank you for allowing me to share with you some of our Mayo Clinic automation journey. My name is John Crooks and I'm an IT division chair at Mayo Clinic. I have over 28 years of experience in healthcare IT industry and have implemented systems, both clinical and administrative across the enterprise. This presentation will focus on the current state of Mayo Clinic's recent partnership announcements, highlight the key attributes of each, and provide some insight into a few of the algorithms Mayo Clinic has been developing to improve healthcare through the use of artificial intelligence. Let me begin with a very quick overview of Mayo Clinic. Along with the Sisters of St. Francis in Rochester, Minnesota, Dr. William Worrell Mayo and his two sons, Dr. Will and Dr. Charlie, founded Mayo Clinic more than 150 years ago. Over the years, while the articulation has changed, our values have not. We refer to them with the acronym RICH TIES, respect, integrity, compassion, healing, innovation, excellence, teamwork, and stewardship. As you can see by Dr. Mayo's quote over a century ago, we are still focused on disease prevention and cure using available technologies and techniques to innovate and discover. In the fiscal year 2019, 1.2 million people from all 50 states and more than 135 countries came to Mayo Clinic for care. We employ nearly 70,000 employees with 7,000 consultants and clinical residents. As an organization with facilities in Arizona, Florida, Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin, our revenues exceed $13 billion and our net operating income for 2019 exceeded $1 billion for the first time. As an academic medical center, we support medical education across more than 300 residency and fellowship programs and have almost 1,800 learners enrolled who graduate just over 700 clinicians per year. As a research organization, we currently have over 3,000 human research studies approved by the Institutional Review Board, publish over 8,000 articles, and currently have external funding totaling over $500 million. Let me give you a brief overview of the U.S. healthcare industry. We do have our challenges, and Mayo Clinic is not immune to these pressures. We all need to find an easy access for our patients, where demand is high and reimbursement varies across our geographies. We have a system which rewards volume over outcomes. We have an aging population, which generally translate into high, higher comorbidities, coupled with an ever-lengthening life expectancy. The US system is not really a system as much as it is a conglomeration of independent healthcare services. The margins within the healthcare system are generally well less than 5%, which helps create a very competitive market for our services. And of course, as seen on the next slide, our services are expensive when compared to the globe. I am sure the audience can be well aware of the disproportionate expense for healthcare in the United States. While this chart is a bit dated with 2018 data, I believe it is still indicative of one of our biggest challenges in healthcare. While we can discuss and argue quality, everybody agrees that this is not a sustainable trajectory in the United States. And therefore, much of what our leaders focus on is the new delivery mechanisms and reimbursement models, which will sustain our organization well into the next century. For us currently, and for this presentation, we will focus a bit on Mayo Clinic's approach to the emerging digital healthcare environment. Digital products rely on quality data and seamless sharing. Of the many causes of costs in healthcare in the United States, the repetition of services is one. This is the result of both our disjointed approach to individual care, as well as the individual reimbursement models, which rewards in terms of financial payments, the efficient completion of services. This leads to overutilization of resources. In this slide, you can see just a few of the attempts our industry leaders are taking to try and share data across the various organizations. It is evidence of the problem and the many attempts at establishing standards for the effective sharing of EHR data.
while I understand this is not the focus of this talk, I want to spend just a couple of minutes discussing the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States and its impact to medical care and Mayo Clinic. First, with our stay-at-home orders across the states, we needed to expand our VPN services. Pre-pandemic, our VPN access generally ranged between about 5,000 VPN connections per week. Over a two to three week period, we expanded and reinforced our services to support an additional 20,000 Mayo Clinic employees working remotely. With the need to provide safe patient care, the government made some shifts in policy, two of them significant. First was the reimbursement of telehealth visits, and second, the reimbursement for care provided across state lines, which was previously prohibited without licensure. These two shifts allowed healthcare to quickly increase the volume of televisits, allowing organizations to stay in contact with patients and to continue to provide care. At Mayo Clinic, the impact of COVID-19, according to our modeling, if left untouched with our current models, would have cost the organization over $3 billion in US revenue. This is mainly due to the temporary ban on elective surgeries and on the ban on international travel. This prompted the organization to take action. We furloughed staff and reduced pay for our exempt professional employees. As our country cautiously returns to reopening the business, Mayo Clinic has been able to quickly book patient appointments, which is promising. We are heavily relying on televisits to do this. That question still remains as to whether that reimbursement will stay in place but the televisit approach has been widely accepted and appreciated by our patients. Speaking of the digital products and the reliance on the data, I wanted to spend just a second talking about data governance at Mayo Clinic. We have had data governance for more than 15 years. A team of distributed experts convened to review standards, set and communicate directions, and monitor data quality. The result has been a highly structured, highly consistent healthcare data set. This approach has allowed us to have very high confidence in our algorithm modeling and, we believe, gives Mayo Clinic an advantage in validating not only our own algorithms, but other health-based al algorithms as artificial intelligence expands in the healthcare arena. Now, Onto our recent announcement, announcements of partnerships. First, we announced our partnership with Google and followed quickly with a partnership with Inference. Both of these partnerships are recognized by Mayo Clinic that in order to become more agile and provide meaningful services through our platforms, we must rely on, learn from, and leverage expertise which exists outside our organization. This recognition will support our highly skilled Mayo Clinic scientists to focus on what they do best, healthcare algorithms, experimentation, and invent invention, while relying on others' expertise to develop products and services, which we expect will advance the healthcare community. Let me discuss our inference partnership first. One of our main goals for this partnership is to accelerate discovery. Looking for technology and al algorithmic approaches to reduce the time to market for meaningful drug therapies. By leveraging inferences, expertise, and data aggregation, by combining it with Mayo Clinic's data and our medical delivery experience, we hope we will prove our ability to focus our talents and improve one of the many frustrations in the healthcare system, the time to market for effective and safe therapies. One area Mayo Clinic continues to, to address is patient confidentiality. While having large data sets is necessary for our investigations and for proving our algorithms, protecting Mayo patients' privacy is critical. Simply removing demographics from data is not sufficient. Our patients expect and we expect to deliver a higher level of trust than that. Therefore, working with Inference, other leading organizations, and our government, we are working towards establishing a scientific approach to ensuring data remains de-identified. This is a complex undertaking, but one we feel is critical to our ongoing development of trusted algorithms, especially within the machine learning, artificial intelligence realm. 
Next, let me talk about our selection of Google as a partner. There are two components to this partnership. First, we will be leveraging the Google Data Center as a storage and compute facility. This will enable us to reduce our on-premise data center footprint and leverage our infrastructure teams to enable and monitor our cloud approach, both public and private. This, again, is consistent with our approach of leveraging our partners to provide services while we leverage our healthcare-specific expertise, even within IT. Second, as a technology partner, Google is developing artificial intelligence tools and data mining tools, which we will leverage in our environment. There have been several reports, including the Wall Street Journal, maligning this partnership. Let me assure you all, Mayo Clinic is not giving our data to Google. We are moving our data to their data center, and we will be leveraging Google tools. But our data, by contract and design, is completely segregated from other data at Google. This will help us to manage another significant expense and challenge, effectively sharing Mayo Clinic data and algorithms. To get a large data sets into the secure environment and validate its security, we will be able to quickly create cohort data sets and provide permissions for other partners to collaborate and innovate with us. Today, we ship data outside of our control in, in order to meet collaboration and regulation needs. While some of that will definitely continue, our goal is to leverage Mayo Clinic environments at Google to share our data and expose the resulting trusted, validated algorithms. We are working diligently to get this environment configured and validated. Our research scientists are anxious to have ready access to secure sandbox environments where they can experiment and generate new learnings and new knowledge. Once we are up to full speed, we can foresee the creation and destruction of secure data environments with a mere click of a few buttons. We will focus on secure architecture and tools to make this future a reality. Again, relying on Google's expertise in technology and Mayo Clinic's expertise in healthcare science. Let me highlight one of the exciting uses of artificial intelligence at Mayo Clinic. One of our cardiology physician scientists, Dr. John Noseworthy, is exploring the data available within our standard seven lead EKG. Using our extensive catalog of image data and working with our vendor, to obtain the raw data captured in the EKG, Dr. Noseworthy was able to determine, just from the monitored data alone, the gender of the patient, a relatively good estimated age of the patient, and to develop an algorithm for estimating heart age. In addition, he is currently work, working on validating information using the basic EKG. There is a potential to identify other underlying diseases which are not evident in the plotted graph, but are consistent with the captured detail data from the EKG machines themselves. Imagine if a pervasive, relatively inexpensive test can be used to identify an underlying disease. If detected at home and early enough, the value to our patients in identifying and treating diseases before they become chronic is undeniable. This is just one of promising example of the use of artificial intelligence tools on our data sets. There are more than 200 AI research projects currently active at Mayo Clinic. If we can establish our data set environments in an efficient manner with common tools, the rate of discovery and knowledge sharing could be limited only by our and your researchers' imaginations. These changes don't come without challenges and there are many. I've discussed the need for effective patient de-identification in our data sets, and security certainly is foremost in everybody's mind as we interrogate this quickly emerging world of artificial intelligence in healthcare. For Mayo Clinic as a trusted brand, this is definitely a challenge we are addressing and actively managing. There are also financial, contractual, domestic, international, regulatory, and employment challenges. The list seems unending but we are up for the challenge. One other challenge that we are addressing at Mayo Clinic, Mayo Clinic is a trusted brand. We have endeavored for more than 150 years to bring innovation to the industry and to openly share our research, discovery, practice, and education. And so our organization is optimized to meet our patient's need. 
first and foremost, at our door. However, this brave new digital world requires us to think differently, act differently, and at, a, and at an accelerated pace more than we are used to. We must find a way to fail quickly with, with inventions while still protecting our patients' privacy and trust. Realizing these are two distinct approaches which need access to our Mayo Clinic's knowledge resources. We reached outside the organization to bring in top talent to help guide us forward through this challenging dichotomy. I encourage you to follow Dr. Halamka's blog to keep up to date with our platform and digital transformation journey. Thank you for allowing me to share with you some of Mayo Clinic's automation journey. I hope this has given you a little insight into what's occurring at Mayo Clinic as we look to leverage partnerships to help advance our science and share trusted, secure health knowledge around the globe. Au revoir, à bientôt.